Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell the title and the thumbnail, we are talking about Dark Lords. Once again, we are back with Dark Lords, and I wanted to just kind of figure out how good they were. So, I'm going to just do the card by card, I'm going to show you some replays, and then at the end of the video, I will give you my thoughts on it. Um, so yeah, let's just quickly do the card by card. So I've kind of changed up the deck a little bit because I realized I wanted my reasonings to be a little bit better. Um, so I took out a lot of the like hand traps besides Gamma because Gamma is the only thing that can't be, um, uh, can't be summoned off of reasoning. So it's very nice to just like mill more stuff off of it. Um, and that's basically it. We took out the Imperms, we took out basically every other hand trap, and the only cards that we are playing to disrupt our opponent are Droplet, Gamma, and Polymerization. Everything else is just hoping that we get our strategy. So, let's talk about the card by card. Um, we have two Ukobak with Triple Indulged. I increase the amount of Ukobak because it is nice with Amdusk as well uh, to allow us to get into Banishment, uh, as well as just overall, it's nice having a second target for something like Indulged so that you could potentially give your opponent two of these guys, um, as, you know, and if you happen to draw it, yada yada. Um, moving on, we are playing two Amdusk, two Nastin, and two Superbia. The reason for these numbers is pretty simple. You don't want to see them all the time, but they are nice to have when they are in your hand. Nastin, in particular, requires a lot of Dark Lord names. Now, we do have a lot of Dark Lord names, but it's most useful in very corner cases, um, where you have, like, a monster and contact or something like that, and your play gets stopped. Um, so it's, it's more good when you already have a lot of other things in your hand, um, a lot of other Dark Lord names, uh, and you can basically get full combo off of it, um, but yeah, that's basically it. Also, it just kind of has, like, the best stats overall, um, just due to the fact that everything summons in defense position, um, it, it's nice to have that 2600, which is kind of a capping point. Anyway, besides the point, uh... <laughs> Amdusk, obviously, I bumped it up to two because of Ukobak, as well as just it's really good to recycle things like Morningstar and Banishment and the like. Um, yeah, two Superbia, pretty self-explanatory there. And then we have one Nurgle and one Tez. I thought about upping the amount of Tez, but I decided not to do that. Um, both of these are kind of bricks. You want to basically search out the Tez. Uh, there's no real point in just not searching the Tez. Um, and most of the time, if you're able to get your combo off, you will end up searching it throughout the combo, uh, as well as just, like, it's kind of a dead card in hand. Uh, same with Nurgle. Good to summon off of a Morningstar. Other than that, not very good. The triple Ixshell, obviously, and the one Morningstar. For our spells, we have triple Reasoning. This is absolutely the best card in the deck, and honestly, should probably be banned. This card is absolutely insane. So, there's that. Uh, we're playing triple Banishment, triple Contact, as well as the double Super Polymerization, double Called By, double Droplet, and... Uh, that's it for the spells. With the land playing one Rebellion, this happens to be the least bad? I don't know. This one's hard to justify. Uh, I feel like so many things have protection from specifically destruction, especially with Branded and having Branded opening, as well as just like, overall it's not really that good to just like pop a monster. Uh, whereas, we are playing two Enchantment and two Sanctified because negating a monster with Sanctified as well as stealing a monster with Enchantment is much better. The reason being, Enchantment prevents them from going into like a Link monster or a Fusion or something like that, and Sanctified negates, so there's that. And then of course, the one Uprising. Now, I know what you're saying, why aren't we playing the Despia stuff? In all reality, I don't actually enjoy playing the Despia Dark Lord version of the deck, I enjoy more so playing the pure version of this deck. Uh, while it doesn't garner as good of results, when I do get to actually play the game, it's much more satisfying. Um, so, that's basically it. It's just personal preference. Obviously, the Despia stuff as well as the Branded stuff is significantly better. Moving on to the extra deck, it is an amalgamation of crap that rarely get summoned. The only things that matter are First Dark Lord and Condemned. Definitely you should be playing at least two First Dark Lords. You could bump it up to three if you wanted, and two of the Condemned. As for the rest of the cards, Apollos is okay. I summoned it occasionally, and uh, Predaplant Plant Verity Anaconda is okay as well for the Super Polymerization, and then Underworld Goddess. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we are playing Mud Dragon, Starving Venom, Dragostopelia, uh, uh, Cyframe Lord Omega, Chaos Ruler, Hope Harbinger, IP Mascarena, Unicorn, and yeah, there you go. So let's hop into the duels and show you how this deck performs. All right, so here we are going first, and we drew a pretty decent hand. 
Not insane, but pretty decent. So we're going to add the X shell here because we kind of need to see contact off of this X shell. So let's give it a try. Let's go for that. And we do see reasoning, which could potentially mill a, a contact while also allowing us to see. And hey, look at that. It does. And we see X shell. X shell isn't the greatest here because we already have it in grave. So not the greatest, but that's okay. Because now we can go for the M dust to add back the contact, which allows us to get indulged into grave. This means that we can go indulged, special summon itself in order to give my opponent something, and then link off into a uh, Condemned, which can then get us the uh, morning star, which could then special summon another monster. That is overall what we want to do, and that's the plan overall. So we're going to go for contact here to contact back the Amdusk. Amdusk is then going to use the effect of contact in order to special summon out the Indulge. The Indulge is going to give my opponent the Uko back, and then we're going to search out the morning star here. We're going to activate the X shell, and since we have a banishment in grave, we're going to search out the contact as additional follow up. We're then going to go for Condemned here, and I know what you're saying. Why didn't you search out the Uprising? Well, the reason for that is because it's actually already here. It's already in grave. We ended up milling it. So that's why. Uh, we're going to search out the Tez off of the Condemned, and then we are going to activate the, uh, or sorry, we are going to normal summon the Morningstar, and then special summon the Nastin. We're then going to mill a whole bunch of cards. We end up milling uh, Enchantment, Banishment, Banishment, and Contact. Uh, and we also ended up milling Superbia as well. So insane value off of that. So we are going to go for the Nastin here to search out the Ixchel so that we have additional follow-up for our Uprising, while also being able to um, keep another monster on our on our field for something like a contact if we need to. We're going to set the super polymerization and pass the turn. That is probably the best turn you could have, uh, especially since we also get to set a super polymerization. We have uh, two effects in grave, or technically three effects in grave, um, while also being able to go Morningstar wipe the field if we need to. So honestly, absolutely insane hand. Uh, and it turns out we're playing against grave keepers. Now, if grave keepers go first, we basically lose. But if we end up going first, you'll see that that actually doesn't matter that they have the Necro Valley. So we're going to go for the Ixchel here, and while it is activating, we are going to go into the first Dark Lord. First Dark Lord will then obviously wipe the field, and uh, it will allow us to basically play the game from here. So we're going to go for the Nastin to go for the Contact. We will contact back the Nurgle. Nurgle effect will activate, and we will search out a card using the last remaining um, banishment. We search out the Amdusk here just to add back the Morning Star so that we could potentially nuke their field again. We're going to go for the first Dark Lord. They are going to go for a strike. That kind of sucks, but we are going to send the Tez to keep it on the field. We're going to go for a contact here in order to special summon out to the Superbia, and then Superbia will special summon out the Ixchel. We're going to activate the Nurgle effect in order to negate our own Superbia's effect just to gain some life points uh, because we were going to use the Nurgle there, and seeing as how they were playing um, Grave Keepers, I figured, hey, this is most likely a set Spy, uh, as well as it allows us to just, you know, cycle back the Sanctified because it's not going to do anything. So that's my plan there. We're going to go for the Hope Harbinger and they negate it with Solemn Judgment. At this point, the game is over because of what we can do is we can go Contact here, bring out the Ukobak. Ukobak effect is going to then send another Contact, which we will then use the Ixchel effect in order to do Special Summon out the Tez. Then we are going to go and link off these two in order to go into a Condemned. We're going to activate the effect of Condemned to pitch this Gamma in order to search out Indulge. We haven't Normal Summoned as of yet, um, but we are going to actually add it back the Morning Star here, and then we are going to uh, banish two in order to go for a morning star. Morning star effect is going to mill a whole bunch of cards. And hey, we ended up hitting that rebellion. At this point, again, the game has been over for a while. We're going to go for the Apollosa. We're going to switch everything to attack and attack for well over lethal. Good game. All right, here we are once again going first. I had terrible luck with my coin flips, so uh, whenever I get to go first, it feels pretty good. They're going to go for their max C here, and okay, there's not really much that we can do about that. Just happens to be the case. Uh, we're going to go for Ixchel here, pitching our... Um, uh, sorry, pitching Uprising. We end up drawing into Reasoning as well as Banishment, which isn't the greatest, but hey, we'll take it. Uh, we end up milling a into a, an Ixchel. Okay, well... Um, not exactly what I wanted, but sure. We're going to activate in order to search out the Morning Star, and then we are going to just set this Sanctified and pass. There's not really much more that we can do, um, so hopefully we just get to go Uprising and, uh, you know, protect ourselves from there. My opponent is going to Imperm our Ixchel. I'm going to go and go for the Uprising. We're going to activate, uh, or sorry, we're going to Fusion into the first Dark Lord, which can't be targeted. Uh, and then we are also going to activate the effect of our first Dark Lord in order to special summon out the Ixchel so that we have a live target for Sanctified. Uh, we're obviously not going to use the Field Wipe effect. My opponent is going to go for Sea Angel. Obviously, we are going to negate that. That's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it's Sea Angel. It searches a spell. Uh, and then they're going to go for a Marincess Dive, which allows them to go into Coral Anemone. But at this point, I'm like, they don't 
they probably don't have access to their their field spell, the Battle Ocean, uh, because they decided to go for it. Sea Angel instead of the other Link one, which is a little bit better because it can bring back a monster um, and then go into your Link 2. So I figured at this point, I'm pretty good. Like, how do they deal with 4k monster that cannot be targeted? And it turns out they can't. They just can't. Uh, they're going to go for the Aqua Argonaut, and then they're going to special summon back the uh, Spring Girl. Um, yeah, activate the effect, banish, special summon. And then uh, they're going to go to battle and pass the turn. Uh, there was a long time in which they just sat there waiting for Aqua Argonaut, uh, trying to activate its effect. Can't do it. Um, we have insane follow-up as well, cause, so we're going to start off with the contact. We're going to go contact the Ixshell, and then we are going to use the... Uh, banishment to search out Amdusk. Then we're going to go and contact out the Tez, and then Tez will activate its effect in order to search a card. We're going to search out the Rebellion. I, there wasn't really a good target here, uh, just kind of something to have engraved. Because uh, we do want the Morning Star, since we ended up searching out the Amdusk, we're going to go for the Morning Star. We're then going to link off into Condemned. We're going to then special summon out, or sorry, normal summon out our Morning Star, which will then special summon out the Nastin as well as the Nurgle. At this point, the game is over, but hey, might as well continue playing. We're going to pop their Marincess Wave as well, and then we're going to mill a bunch of cards that end up not doing anything. We're just going to go to battle, and this is well over lethal at this point. So, you know, good game. Oh, hold on. One more attack. Get in there with Morningstar. Good game. All right, and here we are once again going first. Uh, and we have a Reasoning in our opening hand, which is pretty nice. So we're going to go for the Reasoning here, and my opponent selects level 4, which, of course, it's Maximum Cockroach. Uh, yeah, I stopped playing this card because I always seemed to hit it off of the Reasoning, and, uh, yeah. I, I know what you're thinking, why are you not playing Maxi? I've heard that, I understand, but the reason is simply uh, Reasoning. It's... I, I got really, really unlucky. Every single time it was Maxi, uh, it's actually absurd. I think I hit it prior to me changing to the... Uh, to just taking out that card, I hit Maxi... All but once, I think. It was either Maxi or Morningstar, which Morningstar is... Of course it's going to happen. Anyway, we're going to special summon out our Nastin here. Nastin will then allow us to special summon out the Indulged, and Indulged will special summon out in Amdusk. Again, I was on one Uko back at this point, um, so we're going to special summon out the Amdusk and search out the Tez. We're going to then pitch the Uko back in order to go for Morningstar, and then we're going to uh, normal summon out our Morningstar, which will then special summon out Ixshell. We're going to then mill four, and we end up seeing a contact, which is very nice, um, but I'm only going to search out the Enchantment, because I can't actually special summon anything here, seeing as how the only monster that we currently have engraved is uh, an Ixshell as well as a Nastin, which both have already been special summoned. So we're just going to set the enchantment and pass. Not the greatest, but uh, there's not a whole lot we can do. Seeing as how we already have Uprising engraved, though, uh, we should be fine. My opponent is going to go for Pot of Prosperity and reveal that they are, in fact, playing Flunder, as you can see by Robina right there. So they're going to add the Robina to hand, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. They're going to go Robina search out the barrier statue. They're going to go for Stree here. They're going to banish our Rebellion. That's A-OK. -okay. They're going to go for the M-Pen here. I, at this point, I realize that if they end up searching out something, uh, basically, this is the best time to either go for a field wipe uh, or what have you. Um, so that's what I end up doing here. Uh, so we're going to go for the first Dark Lord, and then we are also going to shuffle back the Uprising. Uh, out comes Mega Ryza, which is funny. Um... Because, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, they're also going to add back the M-Pen, and I'm just going to nuke their field at this point. Um, yeah, they don't really have anything, and we're going to have the Max C back in hand. But at this point, the game is basically over. We do get to add the Imperm, which is very nice, because that means that on the following turn, uh, they just get their monster that they end up normal summoning negated. Um, so yeah, I think they realized that they couldn't really do anything against the first Dark Lord, because he's just big enough, and with uh, Imperm, I just prevent them from playing the game, and then the game is over. All right, and here we are, are on our last match, and we drew a pretty decent hand again. Uh, in all honesty, I'm only showing you the wins, and I'm also only showing you when I have good hands. Even sometimes when I have good hands, it doesn't really end up mattering. And here our reasoning whiffed, because for some reason they called level three. I don't know. what I, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we're going to go for the Ixshell, and then Ixshell will allow us to... Uh, send the Nurgle to Grave, which will then allow us to go for Contact here in order to uh, search out another card here. So we're going to search out the Uprising just because we do kind of need it in rotation, um, and there's no real way for us to get a 
uh, in it and indulged as well as a morning star um, into rotation so we just go for the normal summon of the indulged we're gonna search out the tez here and then we're going to link off into condemned and condemned will pitch the uprising to search the morning star we're still going to search the morning star because it just happens to be the uh, best thing that we can do uh given uprising in grave i'm gonna i i am playing the maxi here i'm just gonna fire off the maxi in case i get kaiju i'm always worried about kaiju uh turns out they're playing pot of duality which means most likely that's not going to happen they're gonna go for the eater of millions and then they will activate ledger of ledger main uh, i okay um, for some reason, I think they didn't remember that Pot of Duality doesn't allow them to special summon a monster, so, um, Eater of Millions is, uh, not doing anything. Literally, first line of text cannot be specialed, um, so there's that. Uh, we're, we are going to protect the Condemned here, and the reason for this is just because I do want it on, um, on field, just in case. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go for the first Dark Lord. I ended up not activating the effect, which kind of was a mistake, uh, but if they end up having something like... Actually, no, that was just purely a mistake. Um, so yeah, we're going to special summon out the Indulged. The Indulged will special summon out the Superbia. We're going to search out the Ixchel. Then we are going to actually super polymerization away the entire field for a second first Dark Lord. That's right. That is lethal, baby. With super polymerization. That was the dumbest thing that has ever happened, but it ended up happening. So there you go. Good game. Now, before we actually get into the deck profile, I did want to show you my win-loss ratio with this deck. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest, I will say, uh, and it looked even worse than this. It was not very good. So let me actually talk about the deck. So we are back with the deck, and in all honesty, this deck is pretty mediocre. What happened to this deck? Well, in all honesty, it was made bad on purpose. This seems like a big instance of kind of like the waifu tax or what have you, where, you know, things like dragon maids and the like are going to be not exactly the strongest archetype because they know that they're going to sell anyway so might as well make an entire different archetype that is going to sell and this seems to be the case with dark lords uh they have a lot of incidental downsides that really make it problematic the first being all of the Dark Lord, Dark Lords that you actually care about, things like the Ixchel, the Amdusk, Tez, etc., all can only be special summoned once per turn, meaning your Superbia, the best card that you have, and the most recursion that you are going to obtain, it can only be used once. On top of that, you basically need to see contact to really do anything. There's not really a way to consistently get monsters onto your side of the field, because at best what you can do is maybe go for Indulge, Normal Summon, and then go for Nastin Special. That gets two monsters onto your side of the field. That's not really a whole lot. You could maybe steal a monster back that you give your opponent with something like an enchantment on the opponent's turn, which is fine, I guess, in theory, but in reality, it doesn't really do much. So when you are relying on a single card, it kind of breaks down. And I have heard a lot of people talking about what the deck could or couldn't do, what they could add to make the deck better, and sure, you could add a myriad of different cards to make the deck better, but if you want a deck to be a top tier strategy, this deck would have to be absolutely gutted and changed. There isn't really a whole lot that could stay, and the reason for this is because hard ones per turns on a lot of these effects, as well as only being able to special summon them once, means that you're not able to abuse them in any meaningful way. Only having one contact means that, again, you kind of need more ways to reborn monsters. Also, their mon their trap cards being their main form of disruption means that you have to have them in the grave, or you have to have another monster that you can send to the graveyard in order to utilize their effects. Means that even if they have good effects, they're not really going to be all that good because they just take up too much resources. On top of all of that, the Dark Lords requiring additional Dark Lords to really do anything means that you have to max out on them, but they're not really the greatest to have in hand because of their inherently high, high level, which means that only occasionally are you going to actually see profit from them being in hand. Nastin, sure, can special summon itself, but requires two other Dark Lord cards. Meaning, again, if you want to play this card, you have to kind of max out on the amount of Dark Lords. Ixchel being the one exception, this is just a decently good card. Being able to discard another Dark Lord, which sets up your graveyard while also being able to draw two. It's a good effect, but overall it's still stifled by the most common card in the entire game ever, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. 
every card or every deck wants to add something or search something or draw or something along those lines, Ash Blossom hits it every time. So there's no real point in not playing Ash Blossom. And guess what? It absolutely destroys this strategy. So all in all, I would say that the deck is missing a lot. If Sure, you could add a field spell that adds protection to something like the first Dark Lord, or you could add another normal summon that actually searches out a spell trap instead of a monster, which would be so much more beneficial than whatever the fuck indulged is. And I know I don't swear normally on these videos, but dear Lanta, this card is bad. And it's still a required card because it's the best thing that they have. So all in all, you need to fundamentally change the way that Dark Lords work in order for them to actually be playable. That's it. There you go. It it breaks my heart because this artwork is incredible, as well as the lore behind it, as well as the actual gameplay style. It's still one of my favorites. There's a reason I still enjoy it. Sure, fusion summoning is great, but in all reality, it's I love contact. I love being able to bring out multiple monsters with Superbia. I like the idea of stopping my opponent with traps in the grave as well as traps on the field. I like the idea of copying effects from the graveyard through these monster effects. I like the whole nature of the mechanics that are Dark Lords, and yet, if you were to change that, it would probably make them a lot better, but it would change the core fundamentals. So, all in all, it's a lose-lose situation. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, a like is very much appreciated, and if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.